hi, hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, and today I have a lovely host, co-host joining me, special guest, Kara, who has been one of my internet besties since way back before the world started ending. <laughs> and, Which is and a long time ago. A while, I, if I squint, if I think really hard, I can't remember those days. I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm just like in a haze. Life before the panorama. I don't know her, but so Kara is a bookstagrammer, maybe not full time anymore. Aspiring author, shop owner. She doesn't want to talk about herself because she thinks it's, but she does all these amazing things and she's great. And um, also sister wife to me for Amos Burton in the Expanse. But anyway, that's not. We'll get. We'll get there. But <laughs> we'll deep dive. Deep dive. Yes. Yeah, yes. If well, you probably can tell by the title, but we're going to be talking about the Expanse the TV show and also about the book. Um, so the first, I think the first book is through the first season and then like what, the first five episodes of season two? Yes. And for regular viewers of this channel, you know that I DNF'd the book earlier this year and then I just watched the show. And then I was like, you know what? I'm really loving this show. So then I went back and I read Leviathan Wakes and I really loved it on a reread. And I felt like it helped me better because I could see things and see all the things in my mind and so um then I rewatched the show and now I love it even more so we're just here to chat about it fangirl well I was room. like I told you oh I'm watching the expanse I need to watch it and you're like oh yeah I'm gonna read the books I'm like it's a book <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know that it was a book I mean it says it on the like credits but I always click skip credits <laughs> whatever Don't need so I was like you need to read or you need to watch the tv show and you're like I want to read the book and I was like yeah but maybe just watch the tv show <laughs> I was like my hold's coming in just I swear it was every uh, every other week you're like have you read it have you read it yet I was so like please just it. just get to the show so I mean I do you want to start by saying like what we've seen slash read so far because we are just discussing book one and yeah the, yeah because I think show part of that you're further along than me so how many have you read versus <clears throat> so well what I did was I I actually tried to watch the show when it first came out in 2014 on sci-fi mm -hmm. so like I think I watched like the first couple episodes and I was like 14 yeah I didn't even know about it like ever yes. heard of it well I guess if you don't have cable you probably wouldn't have really but because it was cable what well, we do but. I did have cable back then <laughs> yeah so I, I tried to watch it and I think I watched maybe like the first couple episodes and then I didn't finish and then in 2019, no, 2019? No, 2020. See, what is time? 2020, I watched season one through five because that was everything that was out. And then I read book one and book two and then maybe like 20% of book three. And then I'm currently watching season six is on. So I'm all caught up on the TV show. Oh, and I have read The Churn, which is the novella, one of the novellas, which is centered around Amos. <sighs> is it? Now? It's dark. <laughs> it's... I, I would expect just from the little bit that we get, like the hints at his past. Oh gosh, that's exciting. Yeah, so I read that and I will, my hold keeps coming through for book three and I'm like, I'll get to it. I'll get to no it. Because it's for the audio, because I actually really like the audio narrator. who yes. He does all of them, so that's how I listened to book one. I read along and listened. I liked, because I read, um, I had an e-book of the first one. And I was reading it. I'm like, okay, I like this enough. But then I just was like, fine, I just want to watch the show. And so I was like, you know what? Never mind. But I did list on my reread, I listened to it. And I was just floored at how well his voice for Alex matches Alex in the show. And I was he, like. He does. He does a good job. It actually, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure the audiobook probably came out first. I don't know when these books even came out. Me either. Let me look. Because I I feel like I only heard of... When did I start hearing about them? I don't know. But yeah, I definitely I didn't even didn't know, know about it. Books, but I'm in not really into like, I'm not into the adult sci-fi scene. So yeah. it's not like I was like knew about it. And you do know there are two people, right? The authors. It's two people. Yes. It says 2011. The first one came out. So yeah. So yeah, the audio book was probably... I wonder if Alex the character listen to the audiobook or like, i mean they say he has a texas drawl sort of yeah so. so maybe that but i mean it's like spot on i was like hold up this is weird <laughs> who is narrating this so i loved it so i've only read the first book leviathan wakes and i've watched through 
did I watch all of season three? I feel like I no, watched. No, you watched to the middle of season three. Damn. That's the middle of season three to the end of season three is actually book three. Okay. So book three is much smaller on the TV show than the other show. Okay. So I've obviously read and watched less than Kara here. But I, yeah, going back through, I'm just like, I was like, is it weird that I'm finding this to be a comfort show? Like, it's not like some slow paced, you know, very uh, soft, <laughs> cozy show. But I, I feel comforted back with my my crew of the rock. I think it's the, it's the characters are really interesting. Yeah. And especially when you get to see their faces. They're much it's a <clears throat> It's a blessing. Uh, so a basic question. Do you prefer the book or the show? I think it's hard. It's kind of hard to say when you've seen the, the show first. I feel like sometimes whatever you've seen first, you mm -hmm. like better. So I like the show better just because I, I think I, I think it's the actors just do such a good job portraying those characters. And I like some of the changes they made in the TV show mm -hmm. that I prefer the TV show. It feels more fast paced. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I, I mean, I do appreciate about the book is how it makes it seem space, how it makes space seem so ginormous. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's going to take us six weeks or whatever to get to Tycho. So it, it takes so much longer to do everything, mm -hmm. which is obviously I'm sure realistic. They did a lot of research, but I like that the show is more fast paced and I'm just like, I love the characters. So I just like... <laughs> I, know. I like weirdly like when characters are in danger or it's like really intense because it makes because I feel for them so I'm like ah. yeah. so the I stakes think, yeah it makes me me care more and so I I, per, I like I'm saying I think I prefer the TV show <laughs> I can just say that with I like the TV show better but the books yes. are good they are they are I definitely like I like sci-fi I don't know if I read as much as I think I do <laughs> I definitely read more fantasy so for this big space opera when I first was reading the book I was just like my brain hurts there's like a lot going on here and uh I also preferred I felt like it took well, I guess the chapters alternate well enough between like the two POVs that we get in the book but then the show definitely the first season has more than the book um so I, but I feel like, yeah, I prefer the show, but I still think the book was good, but I get you like being attached to a character and then they're always like on the brink of something. You're like, oh my God, it just, I re I don't remember when I watched it the first time feeling like it was so, like the stakes were so high so quickly, but then rewatching it, I'm like episode one. I mean, out the gate, we are here, but I still feel like Leviathan Wakes or the show sticks relatively close to the book with obviously the exception of like adding in like the earth perspective we're gonna say spoilers right like yeah oh yeah okay. if you spoilers i figured for... but I'm just, just in case. um yeah what was i gonna say uh the i don't remember <laughs> i was that's like mean. oh yeah that's a good point and then i was like i forgot what oh I about earth like the how who they added in in the show. I mean, I have comments on that, but no, that's not what I was going to say. Oh, okay. It was something about something, but I don't remember. <laughs> if I thought um, I'll say it. But yeah, I think the TV show, they did. And the thing is, the two writers are executive producers and writers on the show. So I always feel more confident in like whatever changes they made. Then mm -hmm. I'm like, well, clearly they thought that was a better idea. Yeah. Definitely help helps on a side note. I know you've been enjoying Wheel of Time more than I have, but I don't think the writing in that show is that great at all but obviously the author has passed but yes yeah, the don't... writing in this show I yeah. think is great and um <clears throat> so I guess before or we can go with this one because going into like the earth thing changes that they did make in the show so they add perspectives in the first season that do they come in in the second book yeah so the second book follows um Avasarala Christian Avasarala and Bobby oh. and then you get Holden's perspective as well in the third book Obviously not. Or I mean, sorry, the second book. Obviously not Miller's perspective. <laughs> but yeah, so, you, so in, in the movie, or the movie, in the TV show, in the beginning, the, so the season two, the first five episodes that are the end of Leviathan mm -hmm. Wake's book, you meet Bobby, who you don't meet until book two. So you get a little bit of Bobby and Avasarala. But I loved getting to see Avasarala. Can I call her Christian? I'm just going to call her Christian. That's easier to say. Her. You uh, know her. We know her. We're friends. <laughs> So yeah, you get Christian, you meet her in the second book. So you don't, in the first book, you don't see any, 
like you hear about earth, like, you know, what's <laughs> going, you hear about it, but I think having the perspective of earth and uh, your favorite Aaron Wright, like you get, you, you feel more, the conflict feels closer, like the mm -hmm. earth Mars conflict where in the book, you know, we're out in the belt the whole time. So really it's just like, I hear what's happening, but yeah. it doesn't feel so present, especially um, when arrow starts moving, like that's the end of the book, but when it starts heading towards earth, like you feel that panic at earth and it's cool to see that perspective. Yeah. Cause it definitely, even in the book, like all of these things happen, obviously they're kind of more spread out or it feels that way. Cause it is written versus shown on the screen. It definitely, you're just kind of getting one side, even though you have two perspectives, they're both out here in the belt and you're just like hearing about a couple things. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, <clears throat> I didn't realize on re rewatching it that Bobby came in. I thought it was only like mid season two. I didn't realize we met her uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of season two. Yeah, so, I mean, you don't get, I, I'm trying to remember what happened in the book too. I did read the books last January, <clears throat> so I don't remember <laughs> like all the specifics, but I, I think some of what you see in the beginning of season two is part of what you get in her part of book two. Mm -hmm. But I think it was because they wanted to obviously introduce her. So when it came time for her story, you wouldn't just be like, who is this? Yeah. I'm like, um, excuse me. <clears throat> but the office of Alice was great. I love Christian. She's fantastic. She's one of my favorite characters. Also um costume design impeccable oh her outfits are great and it, um, i mean that they talk about them i mean this is book two but they do talk like i feel like the way she's described in the book is perfect for how she is in the yeah i'm like always dressed to the nines mm -hmm. but god do i hate that slivering snivering what's his i want to call aaron, him severus but that's not his name uh, aaron right it's like yeah i used to think his name was aaron right like when i was watching the show and then when i read the book i was like oh it's aaron right yeah <laughs> that's his last name gotcha that's what his his name's like Sal Sar sardi salvadir i think it's something like that something he's a smart he hardly ever gets called that so i don't remember but i, I was, I was like, like texting you i'm like you know who i'm talking about this i know it's like who? snake man <laughs> i was like oh yeah, yeah yeah aaron right but i i so i like the introduction of earth i think it and especially obviously we're from earth didn't know that. Did you, if you didn't know, I'm also from Earth. Uh, so it it makes the conflict feel closer to us because we mm -hmm. can relate to like, oh my gosh, we're on Earth. Yes. Like, <clears throat> so it kind of gives you that perspective. And I will say though, in the TV show, it take it took me like a good half, maybe not half season, I don't remember, but to figure out who exactly was in charge and like what were the what what are this like the book explains it much better that you're like okay this is this person but i'm like what is christian what's her job who, who are these people? so many on the show you're like okay well you're admiral and you're colonel and you're secretary of i'm like but what but who's what's the hierarchy i need a chart yeah <laughs> that's I how i felt where's my map yeah i was like I'm texting him like oh, i'm so confused who is this person <laughs> yeah i love about the show is every time you like get a, a establishing shot of wherever we are it'll be like the Rasamante in the belt or like wherever. So I like that. Yeah. The little, the little thing. Also, can I just say that I love the intro, like the intro sequence. I know you probably skipped that. Every I time. have watched it. Yes. I have. But I, list, I like just listening to it and I'm just like, oh I have um, one of the playlists I have on my phone is ex music from the expanse. And it's like really kind of relaxing. And then sometimes not when it's intense, but it's like I'm a saying. nice playlist. If you're like doing something and you just want like a, ethereal spacey kind of playlist ethereal yes i love a good um i just forgot what is the word for it like a soundtrack i often listen to like lord of the rings or something just i'm just like oh, i can see the moments but i haven't listened to <clears throat> expanse i need to add that yeah i need to add that are there any ch changes you didn't like from book to show i can't <clears throat> Besides that, obviously, they don't like, sometimes it gets confusing with like the leadership on earth. I'm trying to think of like, you know, this is, <coughs> sorry, this is, oh, more, uh, <coughs> it's not COVID, I promise. I don't have COVID. <laughs> um, I don't leave my house. So how could I? Uh, <laughs> this is more just like probably a logistical thing. It would just be really hard. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm not a filmmaker. It may not be hard, but you'd have to do a lot of CGI is that in the book, they do a really good job of being of explaining how different the belters look because of the evolution of being out in a place with really low gravity. 
So it's yeah. like, they're really like their arms are really long. Their bodies are really long just because, you know, you don't have the compression of gravity to shrink you down. So I, I like that in the book, it was, you could really tell like the belters looked very different. And I think that was probably, mm-hmm. that leads to the conflict of like, well, they're not like us. So in the TV show, you see a couple of people, at least in the first season who look a little bit taller. Yeah. But I mean, I guess logistically, it's probably hard to do that. Make everyone super, super long. You're like, like we need really tall, light B <laughs> actors. Like, that's the only people we could cast. Like, yeah. it would be really You're hard. like, um, we got 10. I <laughs> will say that <laughs> my, I guess it's still in the book, especially listen to the audiobook to the show. My biggest pet peeve is the way <laughs> the belters talk. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't bother me, but that doesn't bother you. Belta Loda. <laughs> I think. I think it gets a little bit better as the season goes on or the mm. series goes on. But yeah. like, I, I believe that the same person who did the language for game of Thrones helped with this, but I totally could be making that up. So if that's wrong, I just made that. Up. <laughs> but I'm not a Google. Do not, don't quote her. on that. Don't Google it. Just pretend that I'm right. It's fine. <laughs> or that's for the hundred. I could, it could be, I could be mixing up the hundred. <laughs> With hearing that. I have a lot of random facts in my head and sometimes they just get confused. But if you say them with confidence. Exactly. That has worked for some people and we don't need to go into who. <laughs> no, we don't. No, let's not do that. <laughs> we know. But if you know, you know. It's fine. Exactly. <clears throat> I think that, um, okay, so out of the three from what you've seen, I guess I've seen less. If you had to choose, where would you live? On Earth, in the belt, or on Mars? If I could live at Tycho, maybe. But I, yeah. or I guess Ceres is like not bad, but Tycho seems nice. Yeah. So but I, I can't, the thought of being, I mean, I guess if you grew up there, it's different. But like if I was moving somewhere, like the thought of being on a, like a tin can basically in space, like I'm like, oh, ah. you know, bubble. I'm like, yeah. I, no. So I would, I mean, I feel like I'm just biased because I'd say Earth, but Earth's not great in this world. No. I like, mean, is it great in this? Dude? It's not so great. I'm... It's not great in general. <laughs> in any version. But I, yeah. mean, I think just because of the thought of being in space scares me. Like, I love space so much. Like, it's my favorite. Me and Chris Evans. <laughs> but I, no, I love space and it's beautiful. But the thought of just being in a place and knowing that any second you could lose your air. And it's just like, well. There, your air is gone what are you can do so I feel I, like I would say earth just because I'm a little biased because I live on earth right but Mars would be pretty too I'm like I'm like if it was the Mars they have the future they have they they're planning they're working towards can I be on that Mars yeah I mean Mars oh. that is one thing about Mars is it's like they're I think Abbasarala says it like they're a whole nation devoted to a single goal Mm-hmm. and like that's a nice thing like you feel like you have a purpose where on earth people are just like well we can't get a job because there are no jobs so we just live on basic which mm-hmm. is not money it's just which they explain more in book two like mm-hmm. what basic is but it's like you just get a you get f- allowance for food and it's not money food it's just like food credits and then a place to live and that's it <sighs> i mean it's better than what our government is doing but i'm like it needs to be more like in scythe like that? Yeah. They, they you want better. someone to just come around and murder you with no... Uh, no, no, no. I don't, <laughs> I don't want that part. But I'm saying they have like the, you know, if you don't work, you kind of just... I yeah. just want a, a basic, but a little a basic advanced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A little more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, So I don't know. I feel like... They all have their cons and their pros. I just don't think... Like as much as Tycho looks cool, I just... I can't. The thought of just all this in your oxygen being gone is like absolutely terrifying. I know. Or like some big, I don't know, eruption or leak or something, and it's like, well, we can't go anywhere. Yeah. You know. Well, you can get enough. on the you can get on the Nauvoo. Just go get on their big old generation ship. <laughs> okay. Let's see the characters since those are our fave. Um, Should we start with the POV characters and then down the line? Yes. So book one, we have Holden. And Miller, who on rewatch though, he Holden, I I like more. Like I when I was reading the book, I liked him 
<clears throat> I feel like some, I don't know why seeing him or someone acting as him bothered me so much, but like, cause I, like, I understand who he is and why he is, you know, his whole little thing. But I was just like, it, sometimes you got to kill somebody holding like, come on with you, like get with it. But he's definitely the definition of like a righteous hero, like mm -hmm. trying to always do the right thing. And it literally hardly ever working. Out. Yeah. Everyone else was like, come on now and like, you saw what happened when he, and he's like no 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 let's do it this way and then miller who is has the worst haircut of all time yes. oh <laughs> the tv show um so yeah i which you know what going back to something i don't like i don't feel like i like in the show or the book i still don't feel like i was convinced with miller's like switch from just being interested in this case. So like basically falling in love with Julie. I still yeah. was like. I think in the book, they do a better job of it. It coming off as a bit more of like an obsession, but not like mm -hmm. a creepy way. <laughs> but like, he <laughs> just like, you know, we do see he's down and out. Look at his haircut. Like he's down and out in the movie, in the TV show. So mm -hmm. we get that. But in the book, it's a lot more like, you know, he's everyone thinks he can't do anything. Like they think he's just a drunk and a terrible cop and just washed out. And so I think you see his obsession more with like, I need to solve this case. And so mm -hmm. within the obsession, he just sort of like, I don't even say I'd say fall in love with her. Like it doesn't feel like that in the book, but then again, I haven't read it for a little bit. So maybe it did, <laughs> but it, it feels more like an obsession where in the TV show, it does feel like they were like, no, he's in love with her. Yeah. Like, Especially like, that last episode, I'm like, mm, I mean, like, it's a nice moment. Like, I, I like that Julie's like, you know, where are we going? And he's yeah. like, I'll stay with you. Like, that's nice. But yeah, it doesn't, I don't feel the, like, that he needed to be in love with her. Yeah. I'm like, he's like old enough. He's not, I mean, I guess he's, I don't know if he's old enough to be her father, but he's definitely older. So if they would have had more of like a parental sort of feeling, mm -hmm. like he's just like, like if he had lost a child or something and that's why he really wouldn't do it. I feel like I would like that a bit better, but I think the yes. book does do a better job of it seeming more just like an obsession with needing yeah. to solve the case. The show definitely makes it feel like, cause you know, even one of the lines is like, who was she or something like it basically implies like, oh yeah, you, that's why you're looking this hard. Cause you loved her. She was yours. I'm just like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Holden and Miller. I know you love Holden more than I. I do really like Holden a lot. <laughs> uh, I do like his face. I'm not going to lie. He has mm -hmm. a nice face. He's also like 6'2", so that always mm -hmm. helps. But I I do like Holden. I don't love, like, love, love Holden like I love Amos. But I, I understand where Holden's coming from. And I think he's a good narrator and mm -hmm. foil to, like, the other characters. Yeah. Is that the correct word, foil? It's fine. It makes sense to me. <laughs> so I do, I like Holden. I think, you know, it makes sense why he's making the choices, especially because he didn't want to be a cap. Like, he didn't want to be in charge. Yeah. He was just fine just chilling on the Canterbury and hauling ice. So I do like him. Again, not like, oh, my gosh, he's my favorite character ever. But I do like him. Yeah. Miller, I could take your leave. I was fine that we didn't get any more of him after yeah, he died. I was I'm like, like, oh, yeah, that's a good ending. That's a good ending for you. Toodaloo. Yeah. He didn't need it anymore. I was okay with that. <laughs> and yeah, that's all I've got. Yes. Do you have any? Um, so I just want to say RIP Shed. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Shed. Okay, so that's the one. That's what actually. That's why I started watching The Expanse in 2014. Is the actor who plays Shed was on Royal Pains mm -hmm. on USA, and I loved him in that show. Like he was one of my favorite. He's just really funny. So I was like, oh, he's in the show. Great. And I think I maybe watched, what did he die? Like episode two? Or three. It's One kind of, of the, the, and then the he first... died and I was like, what? <laughs> that's the only Never thing mind. for him. So yes. then I was like, mm. but that's so intense, that scene. Okay. That was better in the show than the book because it just is like, you know, a line or two. And I was like, hold up. What? But in it the show, very, like it is similar. Like they describe like getting the binder to block the air or whatever. Yeah. But it's. It's so intense Watching in the it? show. You just like, like you just see it goes quiet and then they just pan and it's like, it just doesn't have a head. Just squirt. I was like, oh. And Honestly, yeah. the, show, the show is shot so well. Yes. That's why for the beginning when you were like, it was on sci-fi. I was like, really? I feel like they did a good job. They did a great, I mean, you see a bump in season four, like as far as cinematic, 
the cinematically because they get that Amazon money, but <laughs> it looks even just like <clears throat> the other day I was thinking watching it. I don't know how, do you know how they record their, like when they're supposed to not have gravity or is it just I, the actors? I mean, like, I don't know for sure. I would assume they're on a wire mm -hmm. and then the wires just painted out and they lift them around. That's how I would assume it's done, but I, I don't know for sure. I feel like it looks so good. Or even just like when they're sitting and like things, I'm, I don't know. I just, What's, I don't know if it's, I'm not sure if it's in season one. Cause I haven't watched season one. I'm obviously on season six. Just when they do little things, like there's, a scene in the later season where they're in zero G and there's blood and blood doesn't like move. It just sits there unless you do something. So like the blood is just floating in the air or like when they pour a drink, the, I don't know where my camera is, the water, looks, <laughs> it just like, it doesn't pour. Yeah. It's like, like it's just little things like that yes. that are so good in the TV show that gives you like, oh no, they're in, they're in they're zero in G or low G yeah. or whatever. I love when they always, when they click their boots. I know. Yeah, I'm to get the, oh, yes, just just stuff. Yeah, stuff like around. that. Or, or like, you hear the clicking. You hear the clicking of the boots. Yeah. When walking. Or when he's like drinking uh, his coffee in like the cup, and then Amos is like, "Did you not? Did they not teach you in the Navy to store your like store your stuff?" I store just yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that it looks, it looks great, great for 2014 and being on sci-fi, and all those little things are. I think too. Kind of the book and the TV show do a really good job of explaining when they're like speeding and it's like extra G's on them. Oh my gosh. Like the, what I was going to say too, the book feels more gritty. Like when they're on their ships, like it's really gritty and like the crash, the crash chairs and everything like mm -hmm. it's more gritty, even though, I mean, the TV show does have the gritty parts, but it feels more gritty, but oh my gosh, the, when you're in like 15 G or whatever they are, when they're trying to catch the arrows. Sounds terrible. Watching, I would die. Yeah. After watching it and then reading it, I just was reading it like, <laughs> like I felt like <laughs> I was, I was like, Ugh. but watching it, especially that scene, because they like have to go up even more and the when the juice, I was like, oh god. I know. I wonder like, how the juice gets into them. Like, are there little needles that just like pop out or? I, and Amos is like, there goes my spleen. Yeah. I was like, no, baby, no. How do you? I just think they spleen? they all do a great job of. Like, you know, acting like they're actually in space. I don't know if they, how many times they have to reshoot that and be like, remember, you're in space. You couldn't do that. But I think it looks great. And I love, um, okay, of the crew, though. The core yeah, we crew got distracted. of Ross and I don't know how we got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what always happens. This is a good discussion. So we'll the start core with crew. Naomi, because she's like second in command. Mm -hmm. I, I like Would you rank, rank, okay, the core crew after shit, RIP shit. Who rank your faves? Like, I mean, I kind of feel like I know your ranking. Like, but who's my me. favorite? Yeah. Um, Amos, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amos, and then I'm trying to. I'm trying to just think of season one. Like, okay, <laughs> what I, book one? How who did I like? Uh, and it would probably be different book versus TV show, but I obviously saw the TV show. But I would say Amos, Holden, Naomi, Alex. Mm. Just, just for season one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where I, where I would put them if I was True, just that would well, change. Yeah. For so the, just based on what like, I remember from that. Yeah, I feel like mine it would be Amos. Mm, and Alex then Amos Neal again. Neal. Amos one, Amos two, Amos three. Like it's just he's one through four. <laughs> just all. Oh, I mean, do you need? I just oh that man. He's so. Anyway, okay. Back on. Sorry. So Naomi. I, I like, I feel like, obviously in the show you get to, I feel like you get to see more of the other characters because you're not just in someone's mind. Obviously we can see all of them, but um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I like Naomi in season one. <laughs> season. I, I like the relationship they develop with uh, Naomi and Holden better in the book. Mm -hmm. Like it does feel like it just feels really quick in the show. Yeah. So I like, like angry at each other and then like the next episode it's like banging in the cargo lock i'm helping you undress <laughs> oh my god you just hated him oh y'all just hated each other the last episode but uh <coughs> are you dying <laughs> and i like alex i oh one thing i like in the tv show is that we don't know alex is a martian until they're in 
the Donager. Mm-hmm. And they Amos walks in and he's like, would you would you sign up or something like that? Because he's in the Martian. Army. He's like, yeah. would you enlist? And then she's <laughs> like, is that an option? <laughs> I, Amos is, Amos is the best. I mean, I, I feel like I'm putting off to like get to the most important topic here about why I wanted to have this whole discussion. And that mean, <laughs> is really the star. And even though he's, I mean, for the least, he wasn't the main character or the main POV. <sighs> Um, in the book, but he just I even like just every time, him, I, I feel like, like every time he would have a line in the book, I'm like, oh, Amos, there you are. Oh, I would be like, perfect, yes, exactly. That's exactly what Amos would say. It's, it's just the best every time. He's so he, and the obviously that's credit to the actor. I know he did a lot of research into um <clears throat> the books. Like, I think he was a fan of the book before, and he really liked Amos, and he did a lot of research into uh children who would have grown up in the same sort of situation that Amos did so he Mm -hmm. and he talked to like therapists and like how would a child who was abused how would they act and so he put a lot of extra work into that character that is shown without even having to say anything and that's that's all credit to the actor but he does so well I I just I think I texted you this and I was like I love that he chooses violence first ask questions second (laughs) Just, yeah, just like natural reaction is just like boom. Let's just take it out, and then we'll we'll ask questions after if we need to. Yeah, and Holden is very much the opposite. He mm-hmm. is like, no, we need to we need to think of all of our options. Let's let's analyze this. And uh, I almost called him Wes. Amos is like, we can just shoot him. Like, why are we I mean, asking that, questions again? That comes from like when you look at Holden's background. Like he grew up on a farm on Earth, which is very rare mm-hmm. to have like all this land and then, like eight parents or something like that. And they all loved him where Amos was like in a situation where you, if you don't act first, you're dead or yeah. worse. Like, so he's very much like, why are we not just acting in this yeah. situation? We're taking too much time. We're going to die. Especially one of the scenes um, when they think they're about to be boarded by the Martians. And Amos was like, well, let me go prepare for plan B. And he's like, what's plan B? And he's like, they come on here. I'm killing them. He's like, hold up. Why would we even wait? Why would we talk to them? Yeah, there like, us? um, there's probably two. I can take them out and we could be on our merry way. And Holden's like, oh, you are not going to do that. I just, everything Amos says, I just. There's so... a line, but I, there's a line I love from him that I say all the time, but it's not in that season. Dang but it. I say it all the time. I think you've seen it. It's in, two, it's in season two when he's like, dead people don't need their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I'm watching a show now and there's like dead people and they're taking stuff, I'm like, dead people don't need their stuff. I mean, it's a fact. He's just he gets to the point. Why yeah. do you the book? And again, with like, and we're we're not alone in this. Like everyone loves Amos, and including the Expanse Twitter feed, they also love. Yeah. Like they let they're like the, the Amos Appreciation Club. Yes. So I think it's just everyone loves Amos. He's just like he's a he's not a cinnamon roll, but like he is. Yes, you know because deep, especially like in the later part, like season two and the season three, what I watched some moments. I was like, oh, I lo- so I've seen so many tweets. It's like, I love the plot of the expanse, the plot, and it's a picture. Of I did. I, like, said, I feel like I sent that to you. Oh, probably. I'm when like, I was first, I, well, mean, I sent you a, like a, a shirtless shot of both Amos and Holden. I was like, oh, the plot is so good. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna see if I had like, any specific right. uh, things me, written down about Amos. Let like, me bump that up. He just, um, yeah, his aggression. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, my line was just like Amos's face. That was my notes. That's right. important. It's a That's beautiful important. face. Um, I love oh, and I, another thing that I like, I just saw in my notes. I like that they made the proto molecule blue in mm-hmm. the show because it's brown in the book, which yeah. is like gross. Like it, I feel like sewage is kind of like what I imagine. <laughs> so like that's gross, but visually the blue just looks so cool. Yes, it it just looks extraterrestrial or mm-hmm. extrasolar is that what they call it extrasolar um, yeah because they can't leave the solar and system. that's the other thing i like is that they're just stuck in the solar system like it's not a book that takes place like star wars over um, star wars is a, whatever anyway you know what i mean like it doesn't take place over like galaxies and yeah it's just one solar system and that's it and it's which is just, just- wild i always have been interested in space but my mind hurts when i try to conceptualize the vastness the never endingness of space and there are certain moments on the show where like someone's like 
got blasted or shoved out of airlock or something and they just show them and I just start literally I'm like I just can't imagine just being you're just in space in space in sp what does that mean and you know and you just keep moving if there's nothing to stop you you just whatever your momentum is you just keep going until you run out of oxygen well speaking of keep, being thrown out an airlock or being exploded and ending up in space we could talk about Fred Johnson I have a lot that was a nice segue so Hello, good Fred space Fred Johnson a <laughs> lot of thoughts um I mean I really like the actor he was mm -hmm. was he in The Walking Dead was he in The um, Wire was I've it? never seen The Wire but I feel like I've heard people say he was in The Wire but I could be making that up too but don't google it it's fine <laughs> I know he was in The Walking Dead I, I have complicated feelings about Fred Johnson but I like the complication. It's not like I don't like him. I just, he is like an onion or a parfait. He has layers. <laughs> and so I'm like, because, you know, I feel like he does have good motives, but still has to look out for himself and people. So sometimes that can come across as like double crossing other people. But um... I like in the, sh because there is a novella called The Butcher which I believe tells the story of Anderson Station, which you see in the first episode mm -hmm. where we're introduced to Fred. Um, and now I can't remember if when Abasarala has the conversation with uh, General Souter, the guy from La Pinky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't they talk about like how Fred didn't even know that that's what it was? Like he didn't know they had surrendered. And so he just yeah. did his job. And then he was like, and like you said, he's complicated. He could have like come out and been like, they didn't even tell me that Earth's the worst. Like they're just out here executing belters. Instead, he just like retired and went off and went to help the belt. Mm -hmm. I know because that when they were showing that person, like, what is going on here? And then they did surrender and they didn't tell him. And so, oh, man. so I appreciate like, that they brought that into the show, like a little yeah. bit of that. We could see some of Fred, but yeah, he definitely is like he wants to help people. But he still is like part of the head of the OPA. So he doesn't necessarily want to do it with violence, but it's like, if it's got to be, it's got to be. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, I will, it's like he'll entertain some <laughs> better means or like try to negotiate, but then this is still, you know, OPA above your desires. But Fred Johnson, remind me, is he, he's from Earth though? Yeah. He's an Earther. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking at Goodreads now. They have so the Butcher of Anderson Station is 1.5. So maybe I should read that before I read Caliban's War. I didn't care as I mean, like I like Fred, but I was not like enough where I'm like, oh, I'll read a novella about him. I was like, oh, I yeah. got but maybe it's good. There's so many novellas. Oh my gosh. Well, I know that there's I think there's a Bobby novella, and there's some novella that takes place with something after season five. But the churn wow. is like the churn is three point five, I think is what it calls it. So they came mm. out after book three. But I read it after book one, and it doesn't mm. have any. It's no spoilers for like the okay. current books. It's just like a look back at at Amos. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I'm like, should I wait and not buy the rest of the books and instead get a box set? Well, they have the novellas, but I want a floppy paper. I want them. I want them. Oh, I love the paper. Floppy. That's a you know what? That's a pro of the book. Look how floppy it is. Yes, uh, I just. I don't want this in hardcover. I mean, I do have this beautiful anniversary Not to edition, read, though. Yeah. But this is for display. Yeah. So it's like if they did a box set, I don't want them in hardcover. I have the a graphic ninth, novel too. The ninth book just came out, the last one. Did it just and come I'm out? Like, yeah, I think. I have a graphic novel, but I don't know where it is. November 30th. So the last book, well, Goodreads says there is a 9.5 a novella coming next year but the last book came, came out but yeah i want them all in this i oh it's so nice oh bookworms understand they, um, do, they get it like, so Amos. speaking of the opa should we talk about anderson dawes yeah good yeah. actor he was in Chanel yes Chanel, never finished but he was in that Yes, I, I get. Can, so... I can pick up a reference. Doesn't mean I finished the show. <laughs> <laughs> There's so. I think that was something. Um, when at first I watched the show after having DNF the book, uh, there since they introduce, I think more well, obviously introducing like Earth, 
um, <clears throat> in the show, there were just so many things that sometimes I was like, okay, we have the crew for the camp that are now on the Rocinante, but then we also have Fred Johnson and the OPA, but then there's also this person connected to this person. And then we have earth and then all these people, but then there's also the Martians. And I was like, there, so act, it can be a lot at sometimes, like, even if you have the little thing telling you like what planet and what I'm like, wait, 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 are these, do they get along with earth? Does earth like, cause there's a lot of, you know, moving parts. And especially once earth is like, Mars is going to attack us. But then the can't or the Rosinante is like, we're worried about being caught by. So there are a lot of moving pieces, but now having gone back, reading it, then watching it again. I mean, I still ask her questions, but <laughs> I'm like, like okay. let me voice memo the uh, response to you. Yeah. Explain it to you. I'm like, remind me, who's this white man again? Anderson Dawes. I have, so I wrote a quote that is from the TV show that I love. Like, it's not in the book, but it's such a good quote that it, like explains like even to mo like us in our current time. So Anderson Dawes says, Earthers get a walk outside into the light, breathe pure air, look up at a blue sky and see something that gives them hope. And what do they do? They look past that light, past the blue sky. They see the stars and they think, mine. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's so good because he's like trying to, that's when, for context, it's when he's talking to Miller about why the OPA does what they do and why they want the belt to be like a free nation, basically. Yeah. And he's just like, look, Earth walks, Earth has this beautiful planet that they killed. And another great line from Holden that he says when they're on the, uh, Donna Jersey said, "Wrecking thing is wrecking things is what Earthers do best." Mm -hmm. But like Anderson Dawes is like, "Look, Earth Earth has this beautiful planet that they ruined, and they walk wow. out and they get to breathe air, and they don't have to worry about the you know the air being shut off or lessened because of cuts, and they just look up at the sky and they go, mine. Like I want more. I want to go out and I want to get more. It's such a good line, and I think that he obviously is a great actor, so he delivers it yes. well. But that really, I think, encompasses." what the OPA feels about Earth. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mars too, but like Earth is, everyone's from Earth to begin with. I, I just, I love that line from Anderson Dawes. It is spot on in the story and now, cause I'm like, oh, Elon Musty and all of those people, but it is very, very on brand with mm -hmm. Earth and it's greed, but they also put themselves in the predicament that they're in. And then there's still corruption on Earth. The politics on Earth just, Oh, I'm so, especially having known what happens later and now we're watching it and seeing some of those people who are in the shenanigans later. I'm like, God damn it. I hate you. And I hate you. And I like you. And it is, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure the, our government's probably like this too. A lot of shady people and like one person trying to do the right thing and they get booted out. Mm -hmm. Like speaking of, I guess we could say, what do you think of uh, Jules Pierre Mao? Oh! I hate him. Oh my God. I hate him. When I first figured out, well, it was so interesting seeing the whole, how the stories were going, the POVs were going to come together in the book. Like, oh at my God, Earth I was gonna, that's what I was going to say earlier. Oh, I just remembered that. Yeah. We were talking about the two POVs is I love when two POV characters finally get together. Yes. And so when we finally saw Holden and Miller meet up and getting to see like how Miller describes the crew or how Holden describes Miller, like, oh, that's what I, I love when they finally, unlike Nina in King of Scars, but that does not matter because I have. No I specifically Blue actually Blue. thought of Throne of Glass when Manon oh. and Selena find that. Oh. Like I was thinking of that. Yes. But mm -hmm. it's so satisfying because it's always like, I mean, I <laughs> these things, but then finally overlapping. But Jewel P Pierre Mao is a. I is he a psycho a social sociopath because he. I feel like, and this is later, I was like, oh, does he have a soul? Maybe a little bit. And then he reminded me again that he doesn't because you sacrificed your own daughter. And he was like, I'll just lay a flower at this tree. Anyway, back to the plan. I know I'm so, trying to think the plan. I don't think, I mean, I don't think they plan to infect the Scopulae, no. but yeah. like he still didn't feel like he was very, uh, like sad about it. Yeah. He took it like, like it a second. For science. Oh, well, she sacrificed herself for the greater good. Moving on. I'm like, this is your, this is your child. Um, he, I'm trying to stay in season one because yeah, I'm it's hard, it's hard later. There's a lot in season two. But yeah, him and once you realize who he's in cahoots with on earth and once all of the pieces start, like who started 
you know, this war essentially, or like trying to start this war. Very interesting. But I, I hate him. I hate him. Mm -hmm. um, well, him what about <laughs> you now? See, I mean, she's fine. I feel like I don't have. They did a good job for like the first chapter in the book is Julie and the first mm -hmm. scene you see in the TV show. Like that's pretty much like word for word. Well, there's not a lot of yeah. words. Yeah. I mean, that was a great way to start it because you're mm -hmm. like, oh, what the hell is happening? Yeah. And then I liked going back and seeing like exactly what happened to her. So I like felt sad because, you know, she was trying to do something noble and like basically got, you know, stumbled on something that wasn't necessarily supposed to happen and sacrificed herself. But in the, I remember, I don't know what I pictured in my mind, but when you see her, when like they find her, I was like, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I was, if I envisioned this. Well, but, yeah, because it's like they, well, I guess, because I actually, I was trying to reread it a little bit and I didn't finish my reread, but I got up to that part, actually just listened to that. And they do, it does sound gross, but I like not at all like what you see in the show. And everyone's just like, don't touch anything. And here's Miller like, oh, but the whole, I, I know the book, you said it, you feel like it's more gritty, but I feel like still like even looking at it, especially like the less well-off stations or places like Arrows just look grimy. I, like yeah, no, I agree. I think house. specifically that the Rocinante in the book is described much more claustrophobically, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like everything's actually a lot tighter, which makes sense yeah. because if there was some sort of breach, they need to close off sections. So yeah. it makes sense to have it be tighter. But the show, the show is much huge and, and open, yeah. which obviously for shooting a show that looks a lot cooler and better. Yeah. But that feels more gritty to me than like the the whatever I was saying. <laughs> yeah. I think that okay, speaking of the arrow situation and how grimy it looks, I I like that better in the show because it's quicker and Holden and Miller are just alone for most of it in the show. Where in the book they're like in a casino level and there's like fighting and yeah. they're like there for a long time. It definitely takes up longer, I think. And they know <gasps> they know less in the book. Well, because in the book, when they get to Eros, they haven't been to the Anubis yet. So they haven't found the data cores or anything like that. Where in the TV show, they have already been to the Anubis and they did mm -hmm. see the data cores and they did find that stuff. The, um, oops. Oh, I have a habit of hitting the cord and then my microphone becomes disconnected. Because what is sitting still? I don't know her. But in the um in the show, I forgot what I was gonna say. Love that for me. <laughs> I'm just like me all the time, constantly. There's I see it, but it cannot come out of my mouth. I'm just trying to like I don't remember. Yeah, cool. Let great. me look at my notes. Let me see what else I <laughs> I'm like, I like the show. I like the show. I like the someone show. was just texting me and being like nikolai's been cast i'm like wait do you see who it is is there a photo no, because i was like uh breaking news no, <laughs> that is important i need mm -hmm. i need to know but um oh i like miller has a line that i like he says too many dots not enough lines when he's trying mm -hmm. to solve the case that's a great line yes i think i saw that on a sweatshirt when i was looking for one yesterday that's uh, probably I just have my one piece of merch that you gave me over there. Oh, okay. I have another character that's not in the... I'm actually not even sure if this character's in the books at all. Or if it's amalgamation of a few characters, which is what I think I heard. Is the character of Kara Drummer. Also, her name's Kara, which I appreciate. Because there's never characters with my name. <laughs> uh, Fred Johnson's, like, right-hand woman. Oh, yeah. Is she? I don't... She's definitely not in book one or book two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's not in the books at all. I think they said that they made probably because they needed maybe another female character. Like the yeah. TV show was like, oh, we need to add. We got a lot of dudes up in here. So I, but I actually really like her character. She's interesting. She's another yeah. belter that Naomi can like relate to. Yeah, be. She's got a strong personality, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I think I'm trying to think of her in this season. I just watched it because I'm thinking of moments that happen later. Yeah. Um, but I was I'm just in, in my mind, I see them when they like went dancing 
at the club part. But there's yeah, a lot more like, of that in the books. Like there's a lot more of them just like chilling and relaxing because everything yeah. takes so long too. They're like, oh, we have to fix the Rossi. It's going to take three months. In the or show. In the book, like, it's like 15 minutes. I, uh, God, I can't think. Oh, one thing. This main is not related to anything we're talking about, but things in the show, like I obviously love obviously seeing things but one of my favorite things was I thought was good in the book and the show was the sequence when they are leaving the Doniger like that whole like shootout kind of thing mm -hmm. I thought was good in the book and then I love seeing it in the show especially the part with Holden and Naomi where like what is what happens something they like start floating but he like attaches himself to her they, and like clicks they down turn off the artificial gravity yes so there are, or what or like they stop moving or something like however they make their gravity it gets turned yeah. off so they all just like start floating so he has to use like momentum to kick her to give him momentum. And then my baby got shot. I was like, oh no. Oh, like, when they fix his leg, you can like hear oh, the crack. And I'm like, oh my I God. feel that I like, was my like, entire body. Oh my lord. Ugh. And he was that the same? And they were she was like, Alex, give him the thing. And he was like taking, he was like, yeah, just he's like, uh, yeah, because like one was an antiseptic and one was like, yeah. an antibiotic and like a knockout one or whatever. And Amos was like, give it to me. <laughs> But yes, when they re the, I was like, oh, oh my God, my leg. They have some interesting medicine there, but I love the um even even though I can't stand how holding trees able sometimes like get your dog or like you better rain rein in his leash. Something I don't don't you dare. Um I just oh I can't wait to learn more about him. Now I need to re read the novella. So I can know about my baby. I mean it's uh it takes place when he was 15. I don't think it's, a, it's not a spoiler to say that. It takes place when he was 15 on in Baltimore. Yeah, which it's what I know about Baltimore. So never I'm been, intrigued. So, but it's, yeah, it's like, I like getting more of him, but I'm just like, oh God, I just want to give him a hug. He's been through some things. Um, Oh yeah. Oh, it's already been 54 minutes. Holy crap. Do you have any other like specific things in the, I mean, wait, how does, so, okay. I don't know if she'll watch this. Probably not. But my friend Elle is Elliot Brooks on, on YouTube. Her husband read Leviathan Wakes and he, he hated it. And I was like, I will fight him. But I, he made some comment saying like, moving a planet with your mind. I, think, I was like, oh, it was not that simple, okay? Wasn't someone just like thinking with their minds a, an advanced extrasolar life form, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, the whole like last couple episodes where they go to Eros and they're like setting the bombs and then it doesn't work and then Miller finds the person. Oh my God. When Holden had to make the decision with those people who are like the medics or whatever who came to who came to Eros and they're like, you have 30 seconds to, you know, make a decision or they're going to be able to blast us to the thing. I was like, that's, I feel like that was a big turning point for him because, you know, he doesn't like to kill without a good reason. Yeah, that was, that him. was, he, he, yeah, he absolutely is not like, we don't kill, kill first, ask questions later. And he didn't, you could see it in his face, which is, a, he's a great actor. He was like, I, mm -hmm. do I risk letting the, I don't know, they call it the Phoebe virus or whatever at that point. They did like, do we let the proto molecule possibly get out or mm -hmm. do I take these people out? And, you know, they're just a science vessel. They were just trying to help. They were on a humanitarian thing and he has to do it. And that, that is a, a really big turning point for him mm -hmm. for what happens in the second book. And you get a yeah. lot more of like Holden's PTSD or whatever in the, the second book. Yeah. And he I would was... say, I don't, as, as someone who doesn't read sci-fi, uh, and like, I've read some YA sci-fi, but I think this is the first adult sci-fi I read. It is, re while it is complicated, there's obviously a lot going on. It is, the writing is really relatable. Like, it's really easy to read. Mm -hmm. Which yes. I appreciate. And I liked the book, but the second book is better. Okay. Well, that's good. probably because it's Bobby and Abasarella, and I love Bobby. <laughs> and I love Abasarella. Yes. Some strong, very strong-minded women and and i just can't wait for you to watch the rest of the show <laughs> <laughs> i just want to talk about I'm the like, show i need to get through it before i ugh, get spoiled for something but like it's so hard even though i feel like with it now i don't know i'm just so torn because i know that 
I can still read the book after watching the show. Like, don't have a problem. I wonder, though, for since there's only six seasons of the show, where it stops. Or do you think it stops at the end of the book series and they just like really shortened a lot of the books? Um, I know something about the last three books that I'm not sure is a spoiler or not, so I'm not going to say, but I think it follows through book six as far as I'm aware. Hmm. But there are some, there are some significant changes um, made to the se season six, which also I can't say because of spoilers, but I'm just... <sighs> but as far as I'm aware, it goes through book six, but... Yeah. It's just... There's some really good moments in the show. I thought the last sequence and him finding, although I was watching it, they're like, Miller, you need to hurry up. And he's just like, he just rolls. He's through. like looking at stuff. He's like, do you see those? Do you hear that? Yeah. And they're just like, uh, oh. like in their seats. I'm like, Miller, come on. And he's just like, do, do, do. oh, let me stop. <laughs> just, I mean, he doesn't really do that, but he's yeah. taking like, I know he's got the heavy thing, but like, I need you to hurry up and get there. He's taking his sweet time. But even though I could have done without the him and Julie kissing thing, I thought that was a sweet moment. It could have just been them holding hands, you know, and crashing into Venus. Okay. Anyway, I thought that was a beautiful, beautiful moment. And it looked, and it visually stunning. Like it looks yes. so good. Yes, it does. And I love that, uh, Earths and all those missiles, and then <laughs> arrows are like, no. <laughs> and so now Fred Johnson has all of those. They're like, like what is happening? And it was like, ha, ah, just kidding. I know that's that's great too that you don't get in the book. Is that and in the book we don't know that Officer Rala has talked to Holden or anything like that. So this you get yeah. like they everybody knows who Holden is. So yeah. he's like this this vigilante. I don't know whatever you want to call him. Like starting a war. Yeah. And so those scenes with Earth sinking Eros is running towards them and them trying to talk to Holden. And there's like a delay of how long it takes to talk to someone, which is another thing I think in the books they talk about a lot too, is like, I left this message. Guess they'll get back to me in 48 hours. Yeah. You're like, they're like, we have a 13 minute delay. Cause yeah, we see uh, Christian go talk to his mom and then talk to him and talk to all the, so I don't know how obviously I haven't read the second book, but yeah, all of that, it just made the the stakes feel even higher with all of the different uh, points of views we got to see. And it was just like, Earth is like, I'm going to send this. And then they're trying to, I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And I heard yeah. one of the authors, Ty, whatever, I don't know what his last name is, but he does a podcast with Wes. They have like, like a podcast him. together. So one mm -hmm. of them, they were talking about how like the first book is a like a a new a noir type of book like that's the 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 vibe is like it's a detective story he's trying to solve the problem mm -hmm. and then the second book is a political thriller and like whatever they mm -hmm. said the third book was so like each book sort of has its own tone and genre so this was more that definitely could feel like the detective story yes for sure oh my goodness i because yeah because i'm like oh i'm gonna listen but i haven't watched all the things so i can't listen to Bay. Well, you'll just have hours and hours and hours of footage to watch later. I know. They go I mean, over each like, episode. Oh, nice. I'm going to rewatch the show. I don't know how many times, but I. Mm, yeah. Did we leave anybody out? Anything? I don't think. We've talked I mean, about I most of the we, major players. Yeah, I think we hit all the big players. There's some like smaller players that have slightly different, like like Havlock, like uh, his partner. Mm -hmm. You think he's dead at the end of that one episode? And you're like, I mean, that was. Stabbed <laughs> I mean, they. <laughs> that was a pretty. I was like, he has. I mean, he was just pierced. He was just nailed to the cross. I mean, and I God, feel like he that doesn't really weird. get in the TV show. He doesn't really have a resolution. Do they? No. Does he send him away in the TV show? I don't. I. I don't think so. I feel like he just like kind of disappears we're in the book they talk about he's like hey you should go to Tycho or wherever he's yeah. at I don't your and he talks to him yeah I feel but like in yeah the in show, the book there's definitely like... more of like his you feel Miller's like I want to keep you safe you're an earther everyone's about to try to jump you now so like let's yeah. send you off to another planet yeah yes Havelock I'm like um I forgot Obviously, we get, well, that's the beginning of season two. We get Bobby 
the Martians. Just from what we saw of Bobby in season two, or the her her entrance is very intense. <laughs> yes. You're like, she's very Ooh, what is happening? Who are we? They are very intense, those Martians. I mean, it's, her. it shows like, you know, you learn about, I think in the book too, about how Mars became Mars because they had the Epstein drive and that was their leverage to become their own nation from Earth. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, there's this animosity that's been between them for, since Mars was Mars, like since they were a colony of Earth. And so Bobby fits right into that. What we, what we view, what the Earthers view as Martians, like, oh, they're just this angry military race yeah just super intense marines and but yeah you i mean she pushes you pushes some buttons of her superiors like we don't need to back down we need to just go ahead and handle this and i'm like oh my gosh stop trying to start war i mean she's not trying to start war but she just has you know hope for the future wants to see what mars can become and earth is obviously does not want that. Earth is the I mom and they're it. the rebellious child, I think is how they yeah. describe like Earth and the rebellious child who we got out of here. Go We're trying to do our own thing. It is oh my gosh, now I'm like I need to read the novella. It is so good. Um so I'm excited to see where it goes and to continue watching season two. Um because, yeah, I don't remember season one being this good, but I was like, oh my God, this was great. And season two, like, I liked season one, but I think it was maybe like episode, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, something like that in season two, where I was like, oh my gosh, am I in love with this show? Like, is this one of my new favorite shows? Like, it just hit at that point where I was like, this is so good. Yes. So if you liked and season one, or you read, read book one and you're like, oh, like, I liked it. Season two just gets so much better. It just continues to get better and better. And more Amos. I'm like, take uh, flight, more Amos you know, because we all realize we love him. So they're like, yes. put Amos on screen. Take that flight suit off, boy. <laughs> My goodness. What a man. Well, we are over an hour because this is high quality. So you need to read it and or watch it or just watch it. Honestly, you can just watch it. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't want to read the book and just watch the show. It's fine. I'm sure if you've watched all the way to this point, you can read You just watch it. <laughs> yeah, or... Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, even if you know you have it, go back and watch it now. You can appreciate it. It's, it's, I still think it's, I mean, I don't like spoilers, but we didn't spoil everything. Great things happened that we didn't, you know. No, we didn't. We gave, a feast like, for we the didn't eyes. Even, yeah, we didn't really, we did spoil, obviously, but also it's so complicated at some points that you like have no idea where to talk. You're like, I would even get to there. I, don't remember these. I mean, besides Amos, you're not gonna remember these names, especially the people on Earth. Half the time I'm like, who is that? <laughs> who are you referring yeah, to? All you need to know, look up a picture of Amos and then you're good to go. Like that should sell it on you. <laughs> Do you need anything? Or if you've seen Mockingjay part two, he's in Mockingjay part two. So if you just wanna watch that. Oh, what a man. Well, I thank you so much for joining me here to discuss this exquisite piece of sci-fi fiction. <laughs> and thanks to everyone for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts down below if you've watched or read and or or both. The Expanse, Leviathan Wakes, what are your thoughts? Why is Amos the best character? Share your love. <laughs> but as always, stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. I'll see you in my next one.